Yes, yes. Good morning, everybody. It's Freedom Friday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As we get on, it is, this is Freedom by Design Live, and I am Dr. K. I'm excited about being with you this morning. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So as we uh, prepare, I promise you, I just got off the God zone, and I am feeling so good, so much confirmation. Good morning, Tish. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, good morning, good morning, guys, as we get ready to prepare um, for this message this morning, for this word, and I am asking God to use me however he sees fit. I am praying over this technology that it is going to be okay, because sometimes it just tends to act up, but it's Freedom Friday, so no matter what, God has gone before us, and he has prepared us for this time, so I'm excited. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy, happy Friday. Tag a friend, share with a friend, tell them it's time for Freedom Friday. Hey, Deborah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Charlie, good morning, good morning. Yes, it is Friday, y'all. Guys, I love hoodie season. It, it, it's that time. You know, it's feeling good. I'm feeling good. I am almost this morning as I was preparing to, um, I was on the God zone this morning. So first praying, get myself together. I'm listening to the word and I'm preparing for this conversation. And, you know, I just, I hung up at the very last minute. Normally I, I hang on where I might leave at the top of the hour, but I, I just couldn't. It was like I was being pulled in as I listened to Roseanne, you know, speak this morning. So um, I hope you guys were on and you were blessed by God zone. If not, I am certain that we can get you on the God zone because you want to start your morning that way. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you, Christy. I appreciate that. These are actually my high school colors. So um, always trying to represent. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As you guys come on, go ahead, like and share for me. Like and share, like and share. Let's get a friend on. So you notice what's behind me. It says, good morning, Centrail. Good morning, good morning. It says roadblock. Now, this morning, as I was preparing and getting myself ready for um, to come on Freedom by Design Live, and I'm like, okay, I'm listening to the word on God's own. You know, we're in prayer. We're praying for family, friends, loved ones. And, and my sister Roseanne begins to talk. And as she begins to talk, she's ministering to me. And, and of course, she doesn't know it. And, you know, she's talking and I'm listening. I'm thinking and I kept hearing her say, you know, alone in these different words. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And I'm getting myself together here. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Avril. Good morning, Juanita. Um, Avril, if you would, um, you or Ruth, though, um, once he gets on or um, if you can drop in the information for God's own, because I don't want anybody to miss it. I definitely don't want you to miss it because you're like, well, I don't rem I didn't remember Here's the information. Good morning, Mama Nucci. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So guys, roadblocks. Now, when we see these signs in the street, in the road, we're often agitated, we're aggravated. It's like, dang, I gotta go another route. I don't wanna go that route. Why am I having to go that way? What is going on? Why, why, why? And you know, I was thinking over this last uh, week, so many things have been coming to me and I see my sister Roseanne has jumped on. That word alone has been coming up and people that I've been talking to it within myself alone, alone. And you know, it's like, what's stopping us? Good morning, Nora. What's stopping us from being truly happy, from being truly at peace? And, and I was like, God, it is really something to think about. What is stopping us? You know, we look for peace and happiness everywhere. We look for it in relationships. We look for it work, travel, friends, kids, stuff. But we never get it from that stuff. That stuff just has us like on a hamster wheel. It might give us a momentary bit of excitement. But then it's like, this is mundane. I'm just going over the same thing. Like, why can't I find it? It's because we're getting caught up in our habitual ways of thinking and we're so stuck in our comfort zones in the past. We're so busy looking for it in the world. And it's like, no, the world is never gonna be able to fill that void. You know, as a young girl and even as an adult, one of the things that I feared the most was being alone. Good morning, good morning. You know, it was like, God, why am I by myself? So when I got a good job, when I got some friends, when I was in this relationship, when I got some stuff, I wanted to hold on to it because I'm like, oh, it's going to make me happy or it's going to make me feel better. But 
as I got those things and I sat, it was like, you know what? No, because even when I had all the stuff, the things, the people, my mind still would frequently drift off into thoughts of judgment, worry, resentment. You know, I'm thinking like, what, what is this supposed to be? Why am I not okay? What is going on? And it got to a point that the one thing that I was afraid of, and a lot of people say, you know, COVID has done this or the pandemic, I sh I'm not going to give COVID it, the pandemic has really impacted my life. Well, it really did impact my life. You know, I have been on my faith walking journey for a while and I was going about my business in it, but I was kind of drifting in it, you know, and I felt like sometimes there were blocks and I was like, dog, I keep running into these walls. Like what's wrong? Why am I just, why is this not happening for me? Because I was treating my faith walk just like I was treating everything else in my life. I was doing it casually at my pace when I felt like it and I'm like okay as long as I got people around me I'm good but God switched that thing up and Roseanne you made me think about it this morning because I had to be alone I had to be in this house by myself so for the last 10 months I've been here and I've been working from here everything I do is from here so I don't go out a whole lot. I don't travel as much as I used to. And so I'm here in the morning. I get my day started. I'm in front of the computer. I'm doing things, but I'm alone. And I'm like, God, why am I, you know, why do I, I don't like it? It doesn't feel good. So sometimes I get up and I'll go walk. But that feeling of loneliness, it never seemed to go away until God said, you know what? No matter where you try to run, no matter where you try to hide, you are going to have to come and see me. And when I got to that place where I just stopped and I was able to really take it in and be still and be quiet, I couldn't let, Frank couldn't fix it. My mama couldn't fix it. My friends couldn't fix it. I had to sit still and realize I was the roadblock. I was creating the roadblock. And I don't know if that resonates with any of you guys, but so many times we're blaming everything and everybody else when the roadblock is right here. We are creating it. You know, when we sit down and, and we're reflecting on, you know, what's going on, it's like, okay, Lord, why am I not happy? And that's a good question. Why are you not happy? Did you seek me first this morning? Are you communing with me? Are, do you have relationship with me? And I'm like at a, deep, at a deeper level relationship. So for me and where I am, and I'm like, okay, I know there's a special anointing on my life and that anointing is not gonna be in what I'm accustomed to doing. So it's like either you're gonna walk in the anointing or you're gonna walk into in what you're accustomed to doing. And I was like, you know what? Here I am trying to fix it all, trying to do, be and do everything for everybody. If anybody has an issue or a problem, I'm on it. Let me fix it. And I even thought I was big, bad, and bold enough to fix my own problems with my own baby mind. But God said, no, that's not going to happen. He told me very clearly. So when my sister was talking this morning and she said she could hear his voice, when the Holy Spirit oh my goodness, when he comes and you have an encounter, that thing looks different. It feels different. Very clearly, he was like, get out of my way. And I'm like, oh, that was strong. That was bold. I was so busy trying to be it all, do it all for everybody. But he was like, you got to get out of my way. You've created the roadblock, the blockage that's there. Nobody created it. You did that move out of my way and let me do what I'm going to do in your life. It's not going to be what you're accustomed to. It, that anointing is not going to come in that comfort zone. It's going to make you feel like, as my sister said, I'm hearing voices. No, I'm not hearing voice. I'm hearing my father. He is talking to me. He is guiding me. He is leading me. And family, I'm going to be super transparent with you this morning. You know, the scripture that came to me was, um, and I wrote it down, Psalms 28 and 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me and my heart is filled with joy. Guys, my mom and I were talking on yesterday and we were talking about the Holy Spirit. And I could just only think as I was um, writing this morning and kind of reflecting about the roadblock that I created. And we talked about the fact that when you really, 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 get in line, in alignment, and you get in tune, and the Holy Spirit is working and pushing through you, everything is different. You, I know y'all remember that um, song, I Remember Mama, 
Um, and I think that was Shirley Caesar. And she talked about how Sherlyn, uh, her sister was like, they were out there in the backyard and they were playing church and they had the glasses on, on, the brother had the glasses down on his nose. And he said, if you love Jesus, jump up and shout um, one time. If you love Jesus, jump up and shout two times. And, and she got up and she started shouting and something got a hold of her. Do y'all remember that song? Something got a hold of her and it was different. And her mama came, her sister went to the house and said, Mama Shirley and I here playing with God again. And her mama looked out the window and said, no, she ain't playing now. Guys, when I tell you I love the Lord, have always, I've been brought up, um, Second Baptist is in the house. It's all in me. The Lord, I know the Lord. I've been baptized. You know, I've been saved. But my friends, about a month and a half ago, I was in my garage. Hear me clear. Because people often ask me, well, what is it? How do I know if God is talking to me? When he is in you and you are with him, it won't be no doubt. You won't be confused. It won't be like, well, I don't know what. No, 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 no. You will know when it happens. I'm walking through my house. I'm praying and I am anointing doors and windows. And this is not something different. I, this is something that I do. I'm in my garage. I am anointing tires doorknobs of the trucks that were in the garage. I'm, I went around my husband's first. I'm touching doors. I'm touching everything. I mean, I got the oil and I'm praying and I'm talking. I finished my truck. So his truck is far over there. Mine is right here. When I got ready to walk back into the house, I'm less than four steps from the door. I got the oil in this hand and I'm walking. When I got ready to walk, something took over me. I'm in my garage. I am speaking and I don't know the language. I am, I know I'm, I'm talking, but what's coming out of my mouth, it was feeling so different. I'm running around in my garage. I, I can't, I couldn't stop it. Next thing I know, I was in the house. I don't know how I got from the garage to the house, but I'm shouting and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, Lord, just help me. Just whatever it is. And I'm saying these words, but what's coming out of my mouth were not these words. It looked so different. It felt so different. I'm talking about, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go out here and I'm going to um, pray, and then I'm going to get on for this meeting. And when I tell you, the tears just were flowing and everything. And, you know, at that moment, I'm like, oh, my goodness, this, you know, this is a, this is what the breakthrough feels like. This is what it, this is what it feels like, like being able to just release. I was the roadblock. I was stopping me from being in full alignment with him because I was up here. I was all in my mind. And sometimes we got to go ahead and we got to say, you know what? We got to stop pressing the pause button in life. We are the roadblock. Stop pressing that button because we want to go back to that safe, comfortable place. My sister Faith is on here and I see the fire coming up because she had to pray for me. Bernadette had to pray for me to get out of my mind. And a lot of us, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. We do that. We're in our intellectual mind and we're like, well, okay, it's supposed to work this way. And I'm going to check this thing off and I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there. And then this is going to happen and everything is going to align. And no, it's not. People gonna look at you like you're crazy. I find myself walking through my subdivision. I'm praying, my neighbor's looking like, who's she talking to? Why she got her hands up? Why is that? I promise you, I couldn't, I couldn't control it. So I can't pray a certain way. When somebody said, well, can you do a quick prayer? I can't, I can't give you a quick prayer because I don't know how he gonna use me. So not, it might be quick, it might not, but I can't. In my own strength, I can't. I can only do what he has allowed me to do, what he has asked me to do. And through that process, it allowed me to look at me very different. So when I'm in situations, I'm like, when I'm feeling sad, when I'm feeling this or I'm feeling that, because I'm still, I still, you know, have to struggle with the flesh as well. But then I ask myself, do you want to feel that way? Do you want to be unhappy? Do you want to be mad? Do you want to feel insignificant? I don't. So God says, well, stop feeling that way. Call it out as you want it to be. And it will be. I've given you the authority. You have the anointing. You can do it. You can move in it. So some of us are making the roadblock when we've been given the authority to move. He says we can go. He says we can call it out that thing as it as we want to see it, not as what it looks like to the world. And people will be looking at you like you're crazy. And you're walking through and you're like, you, you know what? I see it as it is. I see, I see people here. I see families healed. I see mothers and sons coming together. I see uh, marriages that were on the brink of uh, 
divorce. I see them coming back together. I see healing occurring and happening in my life. Guys, when I promise you, I promise you, when you get in alignment and that thing starts taking over you, you're like, you don't try to look cute. You don't try to dress it up because you realize all of what I tried to do, all the money, all the jobs, all the accolades, all none of that compares to the peace, to the love that he can give us. No man can't do it. No woman can't do it. It, it, it can't. That void can't be filled from a thing, or from a this or a that. It only he can do it. And when you allow him to do it, you got to relinquish it all. A lot of us say, well, I'm, um, use me, Lord, the way you want to. You know, I want X, Y, Z. Er, no, use me, Lord. Your perfect will be done. What does that mean? It's going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to feel good. That means that sometimes my accountability angels or my spiritual brothers and sisters, they're going to have to check me and bring me back, especially when I get in my flesh. And when I start having my pity parties, they're going to have to get me together so I can get back on this road that I'm supposed to be on because he is not asking, he is not putting us in situations. Number one, we can't handle. He's never going to ask us to do something he has not equipped us to do. He's never going to ask us to do something that he hasn't already gone before us. And he's waiting for us on the other end. Understand in John 10, 10, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Abundantly. So we are not put here just to exist, just to be. We are placed here to live and to live it to the fullest with peace, love, and happiness. We're getting that through him, not through people, not through stuff, not through things. We have to understand that it don't matter how much money you have, how much stuff you can have every Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Christian, Louis Vuitton, all them shoes that I can't even name and all that other, you can have it all and still be unhappy and you can have him. And baby, that peace, that joy, that love, it looks different. So get out of the way, take your construction hat off and remove the roadblock because you are the roadblock, I was the roadblock, clear that lane, move it so that we can allow him to flow through us. I promise you, yes, girl, That is. this is exactly what joy and peace looks like. When the enemy is trying to say, oh, well, you know, this is gonna happen. I don't because God said, and but God, and I'm not gonna worry about it because I truly understand happiness is a byproduct of loving God and being in relationship with him. Any and everything else, let it be. His perfect will be done. Family, I pray that on this Freedom Friday, that this word was a was a word for you in some way that you can apply it to your life, to the life of your family. I, I pray that my transparency has helped you guys. But this morning, my talk was supposed to be something different. But he see, once again, when I just say, okay, use me, he can make it happen in a way that I can't. So I have to even go back and listen um, to the word. I love you guys. It's Freedom Friday. Hey, it is hoodie season as you see. So order your hoodies, www.freedombydesign1.com. And if you have not already, get your copy of Exposed and um, you know get a little more insight on how Dr. K started removing those roadblocks. And understand, I'm still removing the roadblocks. Some of them are still there. I have not arrived. This is a journey. This thing keeps going over and over. I'm just grateful that I get to have this journey with you guys. And it's not by myself. You know what? I don't mind. I'm like, Lord, if you want me to be the example, if you want to use me and let them see what it looks like, because I am completely unperfect. <laughs> I promise you in everything. So I thank each and every one of you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. Happy Freedom Friday. Go out. Enjoy yourself. Be blessed. Um, go for a walk. Do something great. I love you guys. Take care. And I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye.